to meet him, but we have to live with him today and die with him to rise with him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now we have a prayer by our pa yeah, pastor, and then the first lesson will be read by Sister Kimoni Stapleton Tyson, and then the choir. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Eternal God our refuge and strength. You are the God of all comfort. And so, Lord, at this time, standing in this homegoing service of your beloved daughter, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll comfort, comfort us all. We thank you, God, for your blessings. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your manifold gift, the gift of life. Hallelujah. When you blew breath into Adam, amen, the word of God declares that man became a living soul. And therefore, a part of God, a part of you is in all of us. And God, we reach a time when we have to give an account of how, Lord God, amen, we use that breath. And so, Lord God, we thank you today. We ask your divine blessing upon this service. Hallelujah to God and ask that everything will be done decently and in order so that your name 
will be glorified. We pray for the moderator. We pray, oh God, for the musicians. Amen. The choirsters. Amen. The, even the one that shall deliver the word. We pray, God Almighty, will go forth with the anointing. Hallelujah. And the word of God will find entrance. Hallelujah. Into the hearts of your people. Remember, oh God Almighty, the family now. The immediate family. Uh, pray that you'll console them. And just as our oh God, Mary and Martha wept at Lazarus' grave. And you comforted them. I ask in the name of Jesus that you'll comfort the hearts of those that mourn now. Remember the children. The children. Be their strength, be their pillow. And every member of the family, you be their staff. We ask these mercies and we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our first lesson will be coming to us from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, reading from verse 1 through to 11. I'll read while you follow. And it reads thus, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which was planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit had he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. 11. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God made it from the beginning to the end. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's time for everything under the sun. Praise God. And I, um, it is coming to the end of time. And so it behoves all of us to draw closer and to God. Every one of us as humankind to draw closer to God because the time is, is winding up. And the BOC quiet for us now. I heard the I heard ten thousand trumpets sounding out in 
Jesus. Those of us who make Jesus our choice, we have that hope. Someday we'll be singing God's choir. Praise the Lord. And now we'll have a second lesson by Teresa Minto Olston. Psalms 90 verse 1 to 12. Good afternoon, everyone. Reading from Psalms 90 from 1 to 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generation. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever hast thou formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it pass, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquity before thee, our, sin, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spent our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Here in the portion of God's holy word, we say thanks be to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Teach us to number our days. And we know not the number of our days, so let us apply our heart to wisdom each day. Praise the Lord. We shall be changed. We shall be changed, changed from mortal to immortality, in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed, we shall be changed, changed from mortal to immortality in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. We shall be changed. Change from mortal to immortality in the twinkling of an eye. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we'll be going into tributes. And um, first tribute will be done by Althea Provost, son in law, and then Matthew, the son. We shall be Good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry, sister. No. Yes. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear. The rolling thunder, thy power throughout the world, universe this Then sing. Feel God to thee, how great thou art. 
How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation To take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my god how great the then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the art, how great the Then sings my soul. to thee how great the world how great the world how great the Dennis Crooks to come now. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even as I sing this song, I pray that the family will be strengthened by the power of God. Remember that God will take care of you no matter how tough it may feel god will take care of you be not dismayed whatever be tied god will take care of you Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. All that you need, He will provide. God will take care of you. will be denied for God will 
take care of you. Oh, God will take care of you through every day. Take care of you. God will take care. I said, God will take care. Remember that God will take care. Oh. Thomas Funeral Home. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand. Upon Oh, my God. 
even forevermore. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tribute in remembrance of the late Sister Dorothea Brown. I deemed it a pleasure and an honor to be asked to represent Pastor D. E. Lyle, Officers and Saints of Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic Darliston in presenting this remembrance of our dear sister, Dorothea Brown. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their work do follow them. Revelation 14, verse 13. Sister Dorothy Brown became a member of the Bethel family here in Darliston during the year 2018. Yes, it was in September of that year. She and her children moved from St. Catherine to reside in the Darliston community. At that time, Pastor D. Lyle was in the leadership position and is still is. As they continued their Christian walk with us here, great and wonderful things took place. Her children got saved, and this propelled her to get closer and more grounded in the faith. And so she requested to be baptized. Sister Brown became involved with the youth's department as her children were closely attached to the youths here. She was so motivated by the activities that she accompanied them on outings to Bible Bowl quiz in Southern District. She could be described as a friendly, kind, sociable, and very meticulous person. Her gracefulness could be seen in her attire, speech, and composure. Sister Brown possessed the skill of cooking and arrangement. This allowed her to engage in personal fundraisers, which she eventually extended to cooking activities at church. She donated an industrial fan to the church to help alleviate the heat in the kitchen. She was a strong worshiper and shared some powerful testimonies of her life. Oh, Messiah! Shalom, Messiah! 
Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. She was a strong worshiper and shared some powerful testimonies of her life. Her, her love for her children persuaded her to start a daycare and preschool at her home called Little Angels Daycare and Preschool. Due to ill health, her involvement in the church community was hampered greatly. Therefore, the church had to do its part through visits and phone calls, different groups of brethren and administrations visited, prayed, and served Lord's Supper. Although she was ill, she was intricately a part of her daughter's wedding reception at her home. Her illness had her in and out of hospital frequently. She had a strong faith and a determined spirit and was very receptive to our visits. This, however, was curtailed as visiting became restricted. Prayers got stronger and personal contact with the children who were dedicated and cared dearly for their mom. Our church family, pastor and brethren show their concern in different ways. God saw the road was getting rough the hill too hard to climb. So he gently closed her weary eyes and whispered, my peace be thine. Rest in peace, Sister Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. Come on, man. That don't sound. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. God is good all the time. Excellent. If I could call the tears that are falling, it would seem like an ocean to me but if my heart was like a window i could look to all the pain in the sky you will see but tears will never stay the streets of the city. No of death and my mansion's Teachups. And welcome beyond the gates 
of glory. Cause your heart will never break anymore. I've never met one man with a sorrow. Never know in one eyes with the pain. But there's a land where Jesus keep no stranger. And John Joe's the only song they sing. For thieves will never stay in the streets of the city. Glory of death and my measure joy. And welcome beyond the gates of glory. Cause the heart will never break anymore. Cause your heart will never break anymore. Break Come on, let me see you stand on your feet. We are in the house of the Lord to worship. Let us stand on your feet and let us worship. What Almighty God we serve. Come on, let me see you stand on your feet. What Almighty God we serve. Oh yes, angel Bobby for. Come on, let me worship. Yes, what Almighty God we Oh yes, what Almighty God. Oh yes, oh yes, what Almighty God. Oh na na na, angel of heaven, heaven and earth. What Almighty God we serve. Oh, away, Diana, away, go my church. Oh yes, I wait, I am awake. Oh no, for the stars of heaven shine, and the moon shall turn it in, and the stars of heaven. Come on, you remember this story? I love that man. Come on, let me hear it. Oh yes, oh no, for he has done so very much for me. He has taken a mercy All in the Holy Ghost I love that man that man What to go? Hey, if you know the Lord is keeping you Oh yes, if you know the Lord is I want to sing on Oh no, no, glory, hallelujah Can the children of Sister Brown step forward, please?
On behalf of DT Thomas Funeral Services and staff, I take great pleasure in presenting to you this small token, thanking you for entrusting us with your loved one. God bless you. Home for such a wonderful tribute, and now we're going to have the offering out of the way. The sound singing is in the New Jerusalem. When the toils of life are over and we lay our armor down and we bid farewell to earth with all its cares, we shall meet and greet our loved ones and our Christ we thank shall crown in the new Jerusalem. Thank you. 
give thanks for this day father we thank you for today we ask dear god that you will bless this offering which the people has given unto us we ask that you will bless it lord jesus and for the furtherance of your work bless and keep them O oh god and so that they will give in their heart to you O oh god we know that you desire them to be saved bless and sanctify us lord while we say thanks in jesus name They'll be singing, they'll be shouting when the saints go marching in that Jerusalem, in that new Jerusalem, and the one in the Middle East. Bless the Lord, the spirit realm. And we now have the open tribute and two tributes one and two. Praise the Lord, everybody! Praise the Lord, everybody. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Um, greetings again. And on behalf, let me use this opportunity to convey to the Browns family on behalf of officers, the saints, myself of the Bethel United Church here, Jesus Christ Apostolic want to convey to you all our deepest condolences and want you to be assured that our prayers will be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am looking at everything and I want to acknowledge mother, mama, <laughs> and I'm informed that Sister Brown was the matrix of her womb, first child of 10, of 11, the first, and is the first to step from this side of life. What a coincidence. Well, God knows everything best, and if her mother is sitting right here. Could you stand that the brethren here? And that's um, that's um, Sister Brown's mother. And sister, we are, I met you already. <laughs> yes, and a brother sitting down there. Am I correct? Right. Oh, praise the Lord. And I've been hearing, or we've been hearing about my big son in Japan. And that's Sister Brown's son. We know Massey, we know Rommel, we know Jonathan and Lacey, but we don't know her big son. Could you stand? Let us see you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And your name is? Alden? Okay, all right. And that's Oh, Aldion, yes. We have been hearing Sister Brown talking about Aldion, her son in Japan. Praise the Lord. I thank God for, I'm just looking back on her meticulous, you know, way in which she prepared, especially as missionaries spoke about um, cooking. Y'all, if you're never hungry, man, so size fish. 
And if you love spice, you would really get it. All if you weren't hungry, I didn't want to buy the presentation, how it was presented, you know? Your appetite would be open to praise the Lord eat. And so we have lost a blessed sister, friend, amen, a no-nonsense person, and the children can attest to that. And really, we'll be missing Sister Dorothea. But you know what we are glad for? That during that period of her sickness, especially when she was at home, we would be there. I have made several visits along with Elder and other brethren hmm, to share with her, uh, to pray with her, and to fellowship with her, knowing that she was not able to be coming out again. And as was said in the remembrance, determined. She was determined to fight to the last, and which she did. So may God bless her, her soul, rest in peace. And the children, Ramel and Matthew and Jonathan, where well, Lacey is not able to be here. I don't know if she's here, but due to circumstances, she didn't get to see her first grandchild. Mm? But God knows everything best. And I can say to us as the church that the church that is what church is for church is not just to clap hand and sing and go home but it's a to, it's to be engaged in the total man the total man and so we are here to stand with the children amen praise the lord and might be the family members are way over in saint catherine but our prayers there's no distance in prayer so may god bless you all take heart because every one of us sitting here we have had a touch of that wicked monster but we thank god for the word of god he that believeth on me jesus amen shall live and not only live but live forever with him god bless you all Mom, tears are a language, but God understands. It's going to be taking time for the healing to all the members of the family, but be assured he promises never to leave or forsake us. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord. I'm here. I sat there and I said I had to come and say something. And I'm actually representing the parents in the community because I know that her service, um, she has opened her home and she did a tremendous service, whether it was even classes and um, she extended it to daycare. She went to a group of schools. If your child or, or, or the children, those who are here, just raise your hand if you have benefited. I know that in a community like Darlistan, we had many, um, we had other daycare, but Sister Brown started the right time. And, you know, for parents who would go to work, that service was extended. She did her little um, even classes. Apart from that, she had summer school. And uh, my daughter was one of the, the little ones who, she didn't start at St. John's. She usually go to Sister Brown's school. That's what she would say. And she has learned so much from me. Even the, the, she has learned so much from the, 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 the boys because they were there to, to shape, you know, to help. And I can say Sister Brown, um, in more than one instance, you know, I was actually in the area and I've watched her she's always um she's this, a disciplinarian um she um really did much with the children but i know she was turned and they had a little fear for her and 
she was very outstanding in everything she did she was um respectable she was um respectful also she was um always all um on her way you know she would give you say some little things but when you really look into it you know she'll just tell you the truth um she was very hilarious and she was um exemplary she was always he was this creative person she would always as we would say in our little words turn her hand and make fashion you know she was a real person and you know even through her illness you know i would text her we would talk some of the time but she i can remember the happy times i remember at in one instant when um i was actually in her surrounding and i was having some visitors and she did some big fish you know she don't reach she's not a rice and peas person she would do like rasta rice and she would do like potato with cinnamon she would do press planting she would do her kebabs and all sort of little goodies and i'm sure the children should they really enjoyed you know my daughter is not a big eater but you know she would do things to to, to motivate the children to eat there are so many things but time is against us and um i just said to the children god bless you and thank you for what you have done for the community and certainly we pray that god will give you the, the strength to really start up because we know that that service is really needed in Darlington. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Shall we praise the Lord? You know, um, I have a prayer group going on. I remember inviting um, Sister Brown on it. And let her tell her that woman can pray. I remember one time she was in the hospital and I didn't know that she would really pray even though on her sick bed. You couldn't know that she was really sick. Because the way how she pray. And I remember one time she, um, she was exhorting and she said, Get your house in order. She said, The Lord is coming. I don't know if I'm going to live to see tomorrow. But I'm telling you, get your house in order. And, you know, it really touched me. And I went to look for her and I would um, encourage her and encourage her son. Matthew, because he's the one that really take care of her and so forth. And I would encourage all of them. And I would encourage her and tell her that um, I know it's not easy, but there's a better life await you. And, you know, she just gone on before because we just passing through earth. So anyone in here today that have not yet accept Christ, get your house in order. Can no one know the minute now the Oh, uh, when the Lord will put in his appearance, God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. On behalf of Jerome, Chinella, and Michael, they are at work, so condolence to the Bones family. Before the day is over, before the night is true, you found the answer. God will come true for you. You'll be praying for deliverance. His words are sure you. Before the day is over, God will come true for you. God promised to take care of all his children yeah. when you're going through some rough times in your life. He's a faithful friend for all those that trust him. Yeah. There's nothing too hard for my God can do. He's the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. There is no one like the Lord. There's a bomb in Gilead. Yeah. God will come true for you oh, before the day is over. Before the night is true. 
you found the answer. God will come true for you. You'll be praying for the deliverance. His words assure you before the day is over. God will come true for you. Yes, the Lord. Before the day is over. Yes, God is a miracle. That's God. And now we have a eulogy by Jonathan Brown. Son. Son Jonathan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, is it too late to back up now? I really and truly believe this eulogy was written in the spirit. And just to think about all the things that was written just last night and hear them beforehand come right now out of our very saints and even family and friends it is something uh here to begin one question that so many of us ask when a loved one passes is why Not because we doubt the Lord's will, but it is a result of not being able to fully come to terms with them no longer being here with us in this earthly realm. Why them? Why my mom? Why so soon? But I find comfort in the words penned by the poet Ellen Brennan which says, we can't know why the lily has so brief a time to bloom in the warmth of the sunlight's kiss, but upon its face before it falls in its fragrance and bid, its, and bid the world good night to rest its beauty in its gentler place. We may never know why my mother had to go, but we do know that like the lily, her life, though short, was filled with beauty. There are many life-defining moments in a person's life. One for my mother, Dorothea Maudlin Brown, was the day she received an opportunity to travel overseas and was later asked to stay and live the foreign life. I was told that she adamantly said no. She wanted to watch her kids grow. Another one of those defining moments was actually a more recent one. And I, I can attest to this. I, I've heard it because I wake up very early in the mornings and I will hear her in pain. When the pain will rattle through her body, she would cry out to God and plead not yet as she wanted to watch her children grow. So when my big brother Aldian, you know, asked if I was sure I wanted to re read the eulogy, something in me said yes, even though I was told not to. It can be frightening. But something in me said yes. Because maybe, just maybe, if she were watching right now, I would want her to see how much her children have grown. Born to Janita Beckford and Errol Walker at Linstead Hospital in St. Catherine on May 14th, 1968, Dorothea spent her early years in Banbury East Avenue, also in Linstead. As a child, it was very evident that the D in her names stood and stands for determined. She was an extremely determined individual who once she made the decision to do something, 
it would be done no matter what. Growing up, some referred to her as being stubborn, as it, prov as it proved very difficult to get her to change her mind. She believed in her decision and was willing to stand by them. Her brother Michael, her brother Michael recalls how she took on the responsibility of shopping at the market from a tender age. Not long after she started, she became well known among the vendors for her peppery ways and was later given the, the moniker Mother Pepper by them. You see, although a child, she was not afraid to haggle with the vendors for a better deal. For instance, if the carrot were being sold for $20 per pound, long gone are those days, I'm like crazy. She would work it down to a price she believed was fair. The vendors in true Jamaican style labeled her as, a, labeled her as being forced ripe. Nevertheless, most times that Mother Pepper proudly walked away with a deal to everyone's delight. It is no surprise then that this spirit of determination, stubbornness, if you will, only multiplied as she got older. Another memorable, memorable instance that clearly highlighted this quality accord 15 years ago when my big brother Aldeon Lee celebrated a yet another school challenge quiz victory. This time, the team was gifted an opportunity to travel overseas, the United States. Based on the requirements, my brother had applied for a US visa and was hopeful that everything would be placed, would be in place for the victory trip. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned as his visa application was rejected. This meant that he would not be able to travel with the team in celebration. No, no. Most people when turned down by the embassy, though extremely disappointed, have no choice but to accept the decision for what it is, regardless of the heartbreaking. After all, what, <laughs> after all, what else is there to do but of the embassy? Well, yes. Mother Pepper, she refused to settle for this decision and decided instead, and decided instead march to the United States Embassy to, to demand a meeting with then Council General. This lady has always been crazy. A meeting which she eventually got because she refused to leave otherwise. In the meeting, she presented her case in the true Dorothea fashion and outlined all the reasons their final decision was erroneous. Like that little girl in the market, she haggled with the US Embassy. Probably the only person to have done so. Eventually, not did only she secure a 10 year visa with special consideration for her son she also ensured that one of the coaches whose visa was also turned down received his visa as well. <laughs> that right there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is a testament to who Dorothea, my mother, was determined even the face of rejection. If the D in her name stands for determined when I, well, I am sure the, and the family would agree that the R stands for resourcefulness. Dorothea was the true definition of Jamaican expression. Take your hand and make fashion. What, what she lacked in riches, she made up, it made up for it in creativity. What she lacked in opportunities, she made up for it in industriousness. If you gave her an empty glass bottle, and you can come to her house and see this. If you gave, a, gave her an empty glass bottle, she, would, she could transform it into a usable home decor that you would be willing to spend money on. Where others saw old tires, she saw lawn chairs. 
she used what was available to her to create whatever she needed or wanted. She firmly believed that there, that where there was a will, there was a way. This was also evident in her home, where once you walked in, you could, you, you, you would just get the feeling that you stepped into an affluent environment. Little would you know that the magic she worked to transform what she did have into the most luxurious looking items. For us as children, sometimes we dreaded holidays like Christmas. And I, I have to stress that we dreaded it. Like that was something work, work. Because that meant that several tiring moments awaited us in completely changing around the house. We as her trusted sometimes, most times, most times, unwilling soldiers would be at her beck and call to wash this, cut this, move that, hang those there, stitch this, nail this, and paint that. It was tiring work, but we knew at the end we knew that in the end result would be an amazing would be amazing because no one could decorate home like our mom, like Miss Stranger believes so. One cannot talk about her handiwork without mentioning the fact that Dorothea could cook. To her, cooking was not just something you did as a part of daily life. It was an art and a means to build bonds. She poured her all into her cooking and was not shy to criticize those who she believed did not. Oh boy. She poured her heart into her cooking. Even during her many hospital admissions, she would complain that no care was put into the hospital meals. She believed that people first eat with their eyes. And so she was selective in the ingredients she chose and the way she arranged the dishes. If you had the pleasure of receiving a meal from her, first thing first, raise your hand who had the pleasure of receiving a meal from her. Like, Count, count yourself blessed. <laughs> if you had the pleasure of receiving a meal from her, you can attest to the fact that her meal preparation was grand, was a grand affair worth experiencing. That is one of the reasons she offered restaurants and catering service as a means to utilizing, utilize her gifts, impact others, and provide for her children. Providing for her children is what fueled her fight. She loved her children without measure. Though she was not trained teacher, she ensured that all her children were exposed to education, educational material from a very young age. The home was always stacked with books of varying subjects. And all of us, all of, of us kids were exposed to homeschooling at some point. As a result, we were often ahead of our peers because of her ability to af efficiently simplify contents to make, their, to make them easier to understand, other parents in the neighborhood would send their children to Miss Brown. And so she became a teacher in the community, offering after school, holiday classes at, at extremely reasonable rates. Many times she even operated without even a profit. To the point where it seemed unsustainable. However, she was not det deterred because making a positive impact in the lives of her students was more important to her. <sighs> Dorothea to strangers, Sister Brown to the church family, Phyllis to her brothers and sisters, and mom to her children. She was a, wo a woman of many names, many titles. She, some knew her as chef, others as business owner and teacher, 
we, knew, we know her as a fighter. Yeah. She fought most of her life, not only for herself, but also for her children. And in the end, we witness her fight. Rest assured, Mother Pippa did not go down without haggling. Without haggling with her Ill illness, she fought and fought. But this is not defeat. As my younger brother Matthew reminded us on the day of her transition, even the best fighters one day hung up their gloves. And today, I say even the lily bids the world goodbye. But we have hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of our Lord. The same Lord Dorothea relied on during her many fights. The same Lord she dedicated her life to. The same Lord who makes her victorious even today. As such, we find comfort in knowing though her fight is over, the battle was not lost. I would like to conclude with the poem, She's Gone, by the English poet David Harkins. It says, you can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she'll, co she'll come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be filled full of love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry. You can cry and close your mind and be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what she would want. Smile. Open your eyes, love and go on. Let light perpetual shine upon her. We love you forever, Queen Dorothea. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm sure today that Every one of us whose life she has touched in a small way, uh, we don't have to go and open the casket to see if it is that the person is spoken of because we know for, for ourselves, right? Um, there was, there was a, a man so, some time ago I heard that um, he was living very a very dirty life and then when Funeral service, they are speaking such wonderful things about him. And the mother of, the, of, of, of one of the sons said, Go, go and look for your, your pa, for your pa, really, in your box. <laughs> so we don't have to open the casket to see if this is um, Sister Dorothy um, Brown. But um, 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 we know for ourselves all the qualities that she has and what she shared with us. You know, uh, my little tribute is that um, while we couldn't visit regular because of the COVID and so forth, so I, we call most of the time. I am missionary kids, and we communicate and whatever way we could, you know, as support and so forth. I'm, I'm thankful that I did my little part because I will feel left out today. Um, the next um, item on the program is um, the UC choir, and then the next voice you'll hear is our, our pastor. Will we introduce the speaker for today? Our instrument, God, will you let us pray that He will open heaven and speak to us in Jesus' name?
I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we get our business straight so we can all meet at the gate. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Two men walking by the road, one of them had a heart pure as gold. The sky was split and the pure in heart raptured away. The other one rose on the next day To find their loved one raptured away Cry to the Lord, but for him it is too late I pray that we'll all be ready Oh, I pray is 
no longer there. Learn how to pray. Learn how to pray while you still have time. I pray that we we'll all Yes, I pray. I pray we all Oh, I pray. I pray that we get our business straight so we can all meet at the gate. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray we'll all. I pray we'll all. Oh, I pray. I pray we'll all be ready for his He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about my struggles. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, I greet me the whole soul of faith, Pastor Lyle, visitors, and above all, members of the bereaved family. Praise the Lord. Death is an enemy. Death is an enemy. And the pain that death leaves behind. Praise the Lord. We heard him in the remembrance of me from the church. We heard him in the tribute. Wonderfully and beautifully done by her son, brother Jonathan. Well put together. Praise the Lord. And those of us who did not know Sister Brown from the eulogy, you get a synopsis of who this woman was. Praise the Lord. For the years, I mean, she spent here in Darleston, roughly about six years. We're about 20. Yeah, four years. It was a wonderful relationship that we had with her. She said to me that she was baptized before, but when she came here, she wanted to be re immersed. And she came to me and said, Brother Letman, I want you to do the baptism. 
and I agreed. I, it is ironic that this later this afternoon, I will be the person who will be doing the committal of her body, I mean, to the ground. You know, when each of us look at death, and sooner or later, you and I have to come to that reality, that one of these days, we too will be lying in a very narrow bed. But the important thing is what did we do? The period of time we came into this world and the time we left. That is the important thing. And let us not fool ourselves. This is not the end. Because it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death comes the judgment. Let us come to that reality. Because many of us think that after death, that's the end of one's life. No. There comes the judgment. When each and every one of us will have to stand before the judgment seat of God and give an account of all the deeds that I have done in this body. Praise the Lord. Very briefly, I'll take you I mean, to the book of Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'll read to you there a few verses. From verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul is now writing to the Thessalonians because, I mean, there were persons who were concerned about their loved ones who had gone on. But Paul, I mean, wanted, wanted them to know that there would be a resurrection. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. If you look at the word at the word asleep, that is what Sister Brown is now doing. The saints they go to sleep. And Paul is also saying, I would I would not have you to be ignorant. In other words, I want you to know. To be ignorant is not to know. But once you're educated, you know. So he's now saying, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Sister Brown is asleep. But there is going to be an interesting happening. He said, that is sorrow not. He is not saying to me that we are not to sorrow. But to that extent, we are, to be, we are not to be to overdo it. Of course, I mean, um, her relatives are left behind. Her children. And they are here to mourn. But the important thing is not to mourn, as Paul is saying, as those which have no hope. Because she accepted them in Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. She was baptized in his name, having received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And she had lived a life. And during the time she had lived, particularly during the, the, the years of her sickness, she had the time to make matters right. And Paul went on to say, 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we believe in the resurrection, that Jesus Christ died and rose again, then we too shall be resurrected. We too shall be resurrected. Because Jesus Christ is the first fruit of them that slept, that came back from the grave. And is alive forever. And is now sitting on the right hand of God. Making intercession for us. What a wonderful hope. It's a hope that we cherish. Not in vain. But any man who have got this hope in him. Purify himself. we must be mindful that there is a day coming for each and every one of us that death is going to take us away. When I was a youngster here, we always sing this chorus. Death has a time to steal us away, to steal us and carry us away. And he went on to say here, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Listen carefully. This I say unto you, Paul is saying by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. She went asleep on the 13th day of January 2023. So what we, hear, what we have here this afternoon is the remains of Sister Brown. The house. The house in which she had dwelt. She's long gone. Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. The pain that she was enduring no more. Bless the Lord. But she has got that hope. Praise the Lord. She had got that glorious hope. For the Lord himself. Listen carefully. The Lord himself. Not anybody. No, no archangels. No cherubims. No seraphims. No prophets. As great as Elijah was. He will not be given that authority. But the Lord himself. Shall descend from heaven with a shout. And it is all of those persons who died in Christ will hear the shout. Glory be to God. It's all well and fine. The wonderful trumpets that we have given Sister Dorothea. In accordance to the life that she had lived. But that is only for this side of life. She is now waiting for the verdict. And we would hope. 
that the verdict will be well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes, we will weep as her dear mother here is this afternoon. Because she has missed her daughter. But the important thing for you and I, as the song the choir just sung, is to get it right with God. Is to get it right with God. I'm sure if it was sympathy and love, she would not have gone. But she had to go because her soul had come to the end. He said, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But there is a process. There is a process. And Sister Brown saw to it that, that, she, that, she, that she had obeyed the command of God and followed the process. In Romans, I mean, chapter 8, starting from verse 14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In the eulogy, I mean, that Brother Jonathan gave, he made reference that if she was alive or if she is hearing, there would be, she would, she would ask, put a smile on your faces. Because she had lived by the Spirit. He said, the Spirit is self bearing witness with, the, with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children that, that hear, that, that, then hears, hears our God, and joint hears me with Christ. And it is through this Spirit that we will be resurrected from the dead. Because without the Spirit of God, Christ, we are none of his. And that is the word of God. And Paul went on to say in Romans here, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Eyes can read this. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of men what the great God has got in preparation for us. Because the Lord himself, the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, What, what a time that will be. Uh, in my closing, 
1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul, that wonderful apostle, has given us a glimpse into God's eternal rest. In verse 51, he says here, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And the next important event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. And it is something many of us are looking forward to. When we look what is happening in the world around us, we ask the question, our spirits are crying out, Lord, how long? When we hear the news report, even the incident that took place there in Hanover this week, the nine-year-old child who was brutally raped and killed, it, 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 it sends shivers down one's spine. And the condition in this life is going to go totally worse. If you notice, not many people anymore have got any inclination for the things of God. More so for the things of this world. And if you notice that the songs of Zion has now found its way into the dance hall. And persons are now going there Manifesting as if they have got the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And all this is brought about by the satanic forces that has taken over. But for the child of God, when, you, when we see these things, we are reminded to look up. For our redemption, joy at night. Paul went on to say, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life. We must be born again. We must be born of the water, the spirit and the blood to, to, to be accepted into God's eternal rest. I said earlier, let us not fool ourselves. This side of life is going to come to an end. It came to an end for Sister Brown. And whatever she had not done on this side of life, it cannot be done again. Everything for her has come to an end. And it came to an end on the 13th day of January. But you and I have got that opportunity today to make our crooked part straight. For this corruptible, there is nothing good in this body. Our thoughts our action, our behavior, there is absolutely nothing good. It is corruption. 
So when this corruption, corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. Until Jesus return, you and I will have to contend. Yet. But when Jesus Christ return, and we put on that incorruptible body, then we can justly say that death is swallowed up in victory. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Because God told Adam, in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. And die, he did die spiritually. And anybody who have got the spirit of Christ are spiritually dead. Although you're breathing, although you're doing all the functions of life, spiritually, you're dead. If you don't have the spirit of Christ. But thanks be to God, which give us, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And many persons you try to encourage persons times and times again. And the answer you get, I am not ready yet. Some persons say, I am not coming to church because it's only um, hypocrites. And then on that day, what are we going to tell Christ? Christ, our God, I didn't go to church because all, were, all was there were hypocrites. Then come and show the hypocrites how a true Christian should live. Therefore, my beloved brethren, therefore, my beloved brethren, those of you who have been baptized in Jesus' name, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as they know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And there is a quotation, I mean, that Missionary White made in her remembrance from the church, in that the works those who have died in Christ, their works do follow them. And whatever Sister Brown have done, her works will follow her. I'm not here this afternoon to say, I mean, don't, don't shed your tears. But the question is, don't mourn for her. As, as for those who had no hope. She had a hope in Jesus Christ. And that hope, make it not ashamed. Make it not ashamed. But on that day, she will hear, well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. So as you're contemplating or you're, you're mourning, and yes, death brings a separation. You will not be able to see her again in this life. But, but in doing so, think about your own soul. If you were lying in this narrow bed, would you, would you have found eternal rest. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for the word of God. I'm sure that our soul is blessed and I'm feel sure that somebody today will take a statement from the word of God to live by. You know, uh, at times we think that it's impossible to live a, 
a Christian life, but uh, if we try to live one day at a time, then we will make it. And now we are coming to the, the close of the segment of the Thanksgiving service. Um, I think that we are all see and hear um, what we are giving God thanks for, and we are happy to give God thanks for, for all the gifts that are, were given to um, Sister Dorothy. I think she manifests all of them, and, and it is beneficial to, to us to, to live by it or carry on her legacy, especially for the children. Um, I'm now going to pray for the family. I'm asking you to stand, please. Um, the family. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just order, order the family, please. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your mercies. We give you thanks for your blessings, O oh God, upon our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, O oh God, for the family of Sister Dorothea. Oh God, I pray that your anointing will be upon them, Lord Jesus. Oh God, whatever they say or do, Lord God, you'll direct their steps. Order their steps in your word, that their life will continue to be blessed, and they may live in the remembrance of their mother, oh God, and the foundation upon which, and build upon the foundation that she have laid, oh God, their characteristics of their personality, oh God, that they, her qualities also will shine through them. That, oh God, in, in time to come, they too will inherit eternal life if they give their life to you, Lord Jesus. Bless everything that they shall say or do. Inspire them, Lord God, to live a righteous and a peaceful and a holy life. And at the end of their life journey, they too will inherit eternal life. Oh God, I pray that you inspire them, Lord God, in everything they do, oh God, in to make a livelihood. Hey God, bless their going out and their coming in. Have your way with them, no, Lord, I pray, as I present them in your care and say thanks to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. And now I'll pass it to us. Yes. Praise the Lord. We believe in the sanctuary to the, to the um, cemetery. And we want everything to be done decently and in order. Thank God for your good behavior. And we want to take it through to the end. The, where is the usher? Usher will be leading, followed by the clergy, the choir, then the casket, Paul bearers, and then the rest of the family members, and then the rest of the congregation. I want you to go and be going through the side doors. Just follow the, the command and the order. As we sing for a recessional hymn, when we all get to heaven. Sing the wonders. Love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion, bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be! When we Victory. I will walk the pilgrim pathway 
Thank you. 